Hello and welcome to Talk of Your Games Match Preview of West Ham United against Everton, which has been tipped up as El Sacchio this weekend as a former West Ham player in charge of Everton is under pressure and a former Everton manager in charge of West Ham is also under pressure as well. A strange game, but Gonzo, kick us off as always with your thoughts on our opponents, please. Uh, yeah, they're in a mess. They're in an absolute mess. Uh, before I go any further, that's not to suggest that we're not. West Ham are. We'll get to that later on in the show. Everton are in a mess. We are looking at complete panic stations. The ownership, whilst rich, appear to be clueless. Sound familiar? Um, they they seem to lurch from, from one manager to the next. They don't seem to have a cohesive transfer strategy. And what I've noticed recently is they seem to be indulging, and I'm talking about the, the ownership here and the, the maybe the board of directors, they seem to be indulging a bit of fan baiting. Which is a um, which is sort of a, a recent phenomenon, not exclusive uh, to football. Uh, far from it, but it, it seems to be a way of making their fans look bad um, and unreasonable in a way of deflecting pressure from themselves. And I've got an awful lot of sympathy for the Everton fan base on this one. I mean, you, you've seen reports uh, of one of the directors being put in a headlock. Um, However, a lot of that I believe is unsubstantiated, as far as I as far as I know, and it wasn't quite as bad as that at all. Uh, you've got the press; they've got the ownership leaking to the press that they've they've been advised by the police that they are they they shouldn't go to games because of their own safety. Yet the police have come back and denied ever speaking to Everton about that as well, which looks really really bad. I mean, that looks bad for them to say that. So. Um, I think the whole thing looks a little bit skullduggerous, if I'm perfectly honest. Uh, it, it does it does reek of a club in a, in a mess, and that's before we even speak about football at all. Yeah, we'll speak about it on the pitch in a second. I completely agree with you about everything you've just said here. And it's very, very familiar to what we went through with West Ham. You do this as a non-Evertonian, and you associate it with your club in any way you can. And it goes back to when West Ham protested against Burnley, and afterwards, the media was talking about how coins were thrown at David Sullivan, etc. Yet no evidence of this was ever presented. And a lot of West Ham fan groups and turned around and said, well, where is the evidence? Then shows the evidence. You've got CCTV, etc. Is there anything? Oh, nothing. Nothing ever came out. It was very much just the club controlling the mainstream media to get their narrative out there. And like you said, deflecting away from the blame. Oh, forget why there was hundreds, thousands of West Ham fans protesting about us. Forget about that. What you need to focus on is we had coins thrown at us. And it's, have a look over here and you'll forget about what's going on over there. And that's happening with Everton as well. And when that story came out about the director being put in a headlock, and it was just very convenient that it came out, you know, half an hour after that the advisory board had advised the directors not to turn up to the game because of their safety. And then again, the Everton fans are saying, well, show us the evidence. It happened outside the director's board within the stadium. It will be on CCTV. Please show us the CCTV. No CCTV. Then it's come out since that they never lodged a complaint to the police, etc. Now, of course, this doesn't mean it never happened. But what it does mean is, well, there's no evidence to back up their claims. And it's just, it's very familiar to what we went through. Yeah. And I have, I have total sympathy with the Everton fans because of what they're going through as a club, but also because they're now having to battle what feels like lies from the club. And they've got their mainstream media on strings and they're using that to paint Everton fans in a bad light. And, and I hate it. I hate how that happens because at the end of the day, eventually those directors will go. Lampard will go. It's the fans that will still be there paying their money, turning up, supporting the team. And they can take poor managers, they can take poor transfers, but what they can't take is lies. And, and they shouldn't be expected to take that. And it's just really unsavoury what you're seeing and hearing at the minute in regards to the Evertonian fan base. You know, and Ian Wright sort of made a bit of an error in match of the day and has apologised for it afterwards as well, which I thought was big of him. And it's getting really ugly, actually. And I find it uncomfortable to witness and like I said I've got sympathy for the Everton fans now let's have a look at on the pitch then at Everton I mean it's not going great for Frank Lampard is it no but as I as I understand it he switches his tactics um constantly um I think he's struggling to find an identity for them uh, I think there's as an excuse that and, I, and when I say excuse I don't mean lie I mean 
you know, a fair excuse that are following so many managers and different people making these purchases. It's not his team, you know, whereas you could say this is David Moyes' team at West Ham and, and Lampard uh, would argue that. Um, but I think, look, I you know this, I've never thought that Frank Lampard would make an exceptional um, Premier League manager anyway. Um, however, it's, it's, I think it's got to be very, very hard for anyone to thrive, any manager to thrive, when the club is is that disjointed at the top, um, he seems to look. There was a period when he looked like he'd made a Wobie better, uh, which is good for them because he, what was he forty fifty million pound a lot of money. Um, I, and there's been times this season when I've looked at Damari Gray and thought, oh okay, because when I well, you know sorry to swear, but when Rafa um, brought Damari Gray and I thought it was a really shrewd purchase by about one and a half million something like that. And I think the first few results, first few games under Rafa were very, very good. Looked like it was gonna, he was going to maybe repair whatever damage was there with the Everton fans because he spoke harshly of them when he was Liverpool manager. Um, and then he dipped. Uh, he sort of, well, I don't mean just mean Rafa. I mean so Damari Gray, but it looks like he's brought him back into some form. Um, he'd obviously brought uh, Anana in, who looks to be a decent player. I mean, but by and large. On the pitch, uh, they've struggled, and I do. I'm aware you'll know far more about this than I do, Gio, because you'll, you'll know more about the team and, and how they're playing than I do. Um, the poor is how they're playing. I mean, it's, at one point at the start of the season, they were starting to not do too shabby. Tarkowski and Cody's partnership was working well, and Pickwood was in really good form. They had Nathan Patterson, a right back who's now injured. You know, he switched to back three now with Ben Godfrey in there as well. It's so like you said, he's just changing up his systems. Anthony Gordon was linked with a massive move away, didn't get it, and they're probably wishing they did take it because he's been poor since. You know, he's he's on the bench at the minute, you know, 60 billion to Chelsea or Tottenham. Uh, he stayed there. You know, they brought in Dwight McNeil, who which hasn't worked out. Neil Mopey's come in. The only thing I can remember him doing is scoring against us. I don't think he's done anything yeah, since, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um obviously Nana looks like a really yes. good purchase in there. And they've got some good players, Everton, but I think Lampard's always going to struggle. I think um, he did okay keeping them up last season and there was almost like a feel-good story come the end of the season, seeing him celebrating with the fans on the pitch after surviving relegation and stuff. And there was a little bit of me that just thought, oh, go on, you know, go, go make a success of this. But it always feels like everything's been slowly, and this is over a long period of time, edging towards the trapdoor bit by bit. And it's just through sheer incompetence in the boardroom it almost feels a little bit like it doesn't matter what manager you have they're going to struggle under that board at Everton yeah. it doesn't matter what players you're bringing in they're going to struggle under the manager who's struggling under the board and it's a huge task for Lampard because he's such an inexperienced manager still he's obviously had a gig at Derby and Chelsea you know big jobs but this is something different for him to deal with and when I've seen him speaking to the press recently he, he appears very flustered in regards to what to say regarding the, the fan protesting, whereas Connor Cody, I think, handles it a hell of a lot better in front of the camera. I'm always very impressed when Connor Cody speaks. Yeah. And I just do just sense Lampard. I think there's a man that's not only struggling on the pitch, but I think he's almost struggling off the pitch a little bit. And he tries to deflect it, which is, you know, we're, we're just focusing on the pitch. And I think, well, you're not even doing that, though, are you? You're not even doing, doing the business on the pitch. And that defeat to Southampton last week was a, a huge loss to them. But like I said... I imagine, can't speak for them, the impression I get is that Everton fans came away a bit more angry with what was going on at the boardroom than the fact that they'd been beaten by Southampton, which is always a shame. I think whenever results come second, there's a huge problem somewhere. And I think yeah. the case last week was, forget about that defeat, because we've got bigger problems here. And it's the people in the boardroom. Do you think they'll get relegated? Um, I'm not dodging the question. I don't. I always say I, 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 I think they will. I think they will, Gonzo. I don't know. I, think, I, I don't I think know. It's so weird the season. I'm surprised he's still there. Surprised Lampard lasted till this game. But hey, look, that's I, me. I think I'm, I'm surprised. Moyes. I'm surprised Moyes waited. You think Everton are waiting for Moyes to get sacked? Do you? Possibly, yeah. Uh, okay. Well, they can't go get him now because they'd all West Ham money, wouldn't they? But if West Ham sack him, they can have him for free. Hmm. Yeah, I, I also think that plays into. The fear of West Ham. I think that they didn't want to release Moyes before this 
Everton game because he'd, he'd end up at Everton and he'd come back and he'd embarrass us. Oh, but, I mean, I've just agreed after the game you can have him, take him for free. Yeah, but I, I, I think that plays in. I think we're so muddled in our thinking at West Ham. I know we're, we're moving on quickly before we do the player stuff, but we're so muddled. In, I think it's it's like this tribute. We we can't we can't release David Moyes from his contract before he does this tribute. Oh, we're worried about David Moyes going to Everton. I think we're so concerned about these peripheral issues that we didn't just get rid of him back in November when, when we probably should have done. And and uh, I, I'm surprised they both made it to this game. I, I genuinely am. I, I think Everton will get relegated. I hope they don't. I like Everton. Um, I hope they stay up. I think the Premier League is a better place for them. I think um, I want to see them here like Goodison Park. I know it's not around for much longer, but I still like Goodison Park. But I just look at that team. That's just a team that's falling apart essentially it's it's almost like the, the blind being led by the blind at the moment at that club and they've got far bigger problems they don't have a striker cover Lewin's back but you can't rely on him for long and even though he is back he's not really performing like I said Dwight McNeil is one of the wingers not playing very well Seamus Coleman still running around you know he'll give everything for the cause but he's not up to it anymore and the difference between the likes of West Ham and one or two other cl- uh, not like West Ham, sorry, the difference between Everton and one or two other clubs in the transfer window is you feel like they've got their ideas together, like Wolves, it's a strategic purchase, they're going, right, we'll go get Cunha, we'll go get Lamina, they know what they're doing, you get this sense from Everton that it's just a scattergun approach, right, we have to get a striker, which one? That doesn't matter, just get us a striker, will someone get us a bloody striker, so it looks like we're doing something, and it just feels all over the place at the minute, and I think they need to get rid of Lampard ASAP and they need to get in one or two really good players in this window. And in order for that to happen, you've got to have confidence that that's going to happen. I think they might get rid of Lampard should he not win at the weekend, but it's bringing in the players in the window. I'm, not, I'm, I'm still not too sure about. Um, so at this minute, crystal ball out. Well, three teams are getting relegated and I'm going to put Everton in there along with us, unless things drastically <laughs> change. And there's a case of who's coming down with us. We'll probably Bournemouth or Southampton at the minute. Uh, players you admire, just quickly. Um, yeah, well, obviously, keepers, good keeper. Um, I like Tarkowski, actually. I, I do. I'm glad you mentioned Connor Cody because I would have forgotten about him. I think he's so impressive. I, I've always been impressed with him as a, a leader, a speaker. Um, you need people like that in your club. Um, you know, ultimately, you know, it may not be enough. I, I do think Damari Gray looks. Oh, you know, we we. We could do with a player like that, direct pace, you know. Um, you know, might not be their best player, but I do I I look at him with envy. I really do. Um and think, oh, we could would love somebody like that at West Ham and Anna. Um, we've both already mentioned. I mean, you know, we, he chose Everton ahead of us. I think it's a big loss, actually. Um, you know, I, I, and I do I do look at I, I think possibly had David Moyes got his I know Breuer ended up injured, okay, but I think had David Moyes got his first choices in Anana, Lingard, and Breuer, and I know Lingard, I'm aware he's not pulled up many trees. I think had he got that, we may not find ourselves where we are. So he probably would have been more suited, all of them, to the way David Moyes wants to play. Um, they got, they got. Look, Calvert Lewin is broken, isn't he? So um, you know they, they got their own problems, and it's just gelling that lot into a cohesive unit um, is is difficult, I think, for anyone. At least the boys does go to Everton. He's got his transfer target in Onana there, and he's also got Tarkowski, who he really wanted a couple of years ago as well. So some really <laughs> that's David, that's some... true. There you go. It's all the plan all along, yeah. Um, I, I really like Ben Godfrey. I know he's not necessarily hitting the Disney Heights or anything, but he's a centre-back I, I, I've always liked. I agree with you about the man of Gray. I think he's looked their biggest threat in recent weeks. I think Iwobi was brilliant the first half of the season. Uh, yeah. I haven't seen loads of Everton since the restart of domestic football after the World Cup. But the impression I get is he's no longer playing that well. And I'm a big fan of Nathan Patterson. I know he's injured at the minute, but I do think he's a tremendous right back. And I think he'll be a top, top talent. Injured quite a lot, though. He's been he's missed far too many games already for Everton. But a lot of them are impact blows where he goes in for tackle or whatever and comes off a little bit worse. It's not like he's just got injured in training or that. But Patterson will be a really good player for them. Anyway, shall we discuss West Ham? Yeah, mate. Before we do, this video is in collaboration with Betmate, the Seven Aside Fantasy Football. And this weekend is a little bit different because there's four fixtures 
West Ham are involved in. It's all the Saturday 3 p.m. game. So you've got eight teams to select from, but you can only have a maximum of two players per club. So it gets a little bit tricky, but there's no budget. So if you fancy play Betmate, you can download the app using the link in the description. Use the code HC10. And once you spend at least one pound on the app, you'll receive £10 free credit for using the Hammers chat code. We're going to take a little peek at Gonzo's team for the weekend. Gonzo, in goal, you've got Brighton Sanchez. At the back, you've got Lucastina and Kurt Zuma. You've gone with Onana as well as Buendia, and you've also gone with Johnson and Adams up front. Yeah, I think it's a good team, Gio. Uh, the, the thing is, what people won't see from here is you get to choose substitutes on bet mate and one of my substitutes is, is danny ings now in this particular game because what it's basically this particular game is all the 3 p.m kickoffs you've been sneaky because you can't well, I, did, I, did, well, I didn't know so ings so ings is in there ings and substitutes oh, bench. i might do that but you say you say that I, I i do wonder if i have to change that up because that would take me to three west ham players overall and what i'm saying is normally what you'll do is when you'll you'll use Betmate on a game-by-game -game basis. So you'll have to choose uh, 12 players, basically six from one team, six from another. This is all the 3 p.m. kickoff. So it's two players from each team. It's a good prize pot for this one as well. I may have to amend it depending on what happens with Danny Ings. Well, the good thing with Betmate is you can amend your team five minutes before kickoff. So you've got until five to three to get your team in. So if you fancy getting involved, uh, you can download the app using the link in the description. Use the code HC10 to join up. Right, West Ham team news. No Craig Dawson for West Ham. He's been absent from training as he seeks to move to Wolverhampton Wanderers this week. But Kurt Zuma is back and expected to start for West Ham. There's a lot of rumours going around that Gianluca Scamacca is injured and will be out for a month. However, that is yet to be officially confirmed. So we'll have to wait for David Moyes' press conference on that one. And any player that West Ham signed or Everton signed before noon on Friday will be eligible for the game. So 12 o'clock on Friday is the magic time for players to be able to feature for Saturday's game. So uh, if West Ham were to decide to sign Dan Ings, he's got to be done by 12 o'clock on Friday. Uh, Gonzo, this should be interesting, man. Yeah. Let's see what team we want to play. Not the team we think David Moyes will do. The team that we would like to see face Everton. In goal? Uh, Alphonse Areola. Yeah, I agree. Fabianski didn't do anything wrong against Wolves, really. But I just want to see a change. I just want to see big changes. And I want to see a big change in attitude as well. And so I'm starting with Areola. Your back four will be interesting. Three of them picked themselves. So it's the left back I'm interested in. But top me three of back four. Uh, it's Sufal, it's Zuma, it's a Gerd, uh, and it's Ben Johnson at left back for me. I've gone with Emerson. Um, why Ben Johnson? Um, well, I, I think he offers uh, defensive uh, stability. I think there's there's one area where I do believe that Everton have looked okay this season. It's it's running uh, from wide areas. So um, yeah, I'd prefer him there to, as a, for defensively above and beyond either Emerson or Cresswell because I think they'll probably go for us uh, from wide positions. I don't disagree that Johnson's better than Emerson defensively, but I think Emerson's better than Johnson offensively, and that's why I would like to see Emerson start this one. I want to take the game to Everton from the first whistle. I want as much opportunities to supply the striker in that starting 11. And I think Emerson and Sufal of fullbacks give us that in regards to defence. Plus Zuma and Aguirre at centre-back. That's two really good centre-backs yes. there. You sort of like, come on now, just take the brakes off a little bit. We need to get three points on Saturday. So Emerson for me. Moving into midfield. Uh, yeah, I've got Rice, Paqueta and Lanzini playing as the number 10. Because, because I too want to take the game to Everton. I think it's very, very important. And man, who's the man to do that? I'm particularly given to link up with the striker, I think, as well. Yeah, I I, I just want, as, as you say, they are two really good central defenders. Not only two good central defenders, Rice is going to be sitting. This is, a, you know, we, we want to be trying to get £100 million for this guy. This is England's World Cup central defensive midfielder who is wanted by Arsenal, by Man United, Chelsea. This is a top-class player. Two centre-halves like that, £30 million central defender, £35 million central defender, and £100 million defensive midfielder covering them. Come on, guys. Let's let's attack with the rest of the team, please. Yeah, I'm 50-50 with this one. I was inclined to say Paquetta Rice and Downs because yep. it's battle time. It's roll your sleeves up and get stuck in, and it will be a battle in the middle of the pitch. So Nana, Jusagana, and... Um, 
whoever else is in there for Everton, they will make it difficult. They, they, there will be a fight in the middle of the pitch. So I thought, get Downs in there, somebody that's calm in possession, that isn't afraid of the physical challenge. But I think I'm going to stick with what I've wanted to see for the last month. I'm just going to say it again. Depp complies, defence for mid, and then Paqueta and Fernandes in front of him. It's just what I'd like to see. I think there's creativity in there. Both, both of those get stuck into. Paqueta and Fernandes will... They're not necessarily very, very good at it in terms of tackling, but they will try. They will put in 100% effort, and that's why I put them in there. And your front three, um, shall we say that, give me, well, Bowen on the right and Ben Ram on the left? Absolutely, yes, which is another okay. reason why why Johnson plays at left full back. Just, you know, don't worry about Ben Rama coming back. Johnson can do that. Let's let's get at them. Okay, so if Skamaka was fit, you would start him, would you? No, no, but I don't think he is fit. So if Skamaka was fit, who would you start? I'm going to start Danny Ings. How are you? Yeah, I bloody am. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons I I, learned, learned, I, I could tell you was a little bit excited when I said that. I'm, I am getting excited. <laughs> he likes it. He likes I it. I do like him. Um, yeah, and that's another reason. Lanz I've got a feeling I can see it in my mind's eye. I can see Lanzini and Danny Ings. Little one twos, bang. You know what I mean? Ball goes into Danny Ings. He flicks it off. He lays it off to Lanzini. He spins in. He runs in behind. Lanzini sets him up. Maybe a little chip. Bang, Danny Ings. Oh, gee, I, I can't think you're getting it. excited as well. <laughs> there we go. So uh yeah, that's this is you've seen the light. It's, it's the way, mate. It's the way as um that's a catchphrase for some TV series. Yes, that is the way. Yeah, I would go with Danny Ings as well, because A, obvious reasons, I love him, and B, he's our most informed striker. As soon as we sign him, he's our most informed striker. He is though, isn't he? <laughs> yes, yes, he is. Yes. He is. He's yes, he's more he informed than Skamaka and he's more informed than Antonio. And I don't like the noises that Antonio has been making this week on his podcast either. I don't like Ooh. it. Tell me, uh, give, give, me, give, me, give me one of the noises. Well, we could do the video about it tomorrow um, on the forum channel or something. But he's basically been saying, oh, if if a club comes in, things might change at the minute. I'm thinking about West Ham, but things might change. It's football. And I just think, oh, if you don't want to be here, just do one, because we only yeah, yeah. need players that want to be here. Honestly, I would not blame Moyes if Antonio wasn't even in his squad on Saturday, even if Ings was up front and Mubama was on the bench, and he said, well, Antonio has basically said he doesn't want to be here, so out he goes. I'm not having that. Please, I'd much rather see that. Um, so, yeah, Danny Ings up front for me. Hopefully, Smack is fit, but even if he was, I'd still go with Ings, because You've got to put money on who's most likely to score. And Ings is the one I'd be placing my money on out of those three, four, if you include Mubama. Gonzo, it is a monster game for both teams and both managers. It, it's crazy. It's crazy how the um, the fixture list throws these sort of things up at these particular times, not just down there. You know, as we've seen it before when teams are going for, you know, that last Champions League spot or the, the title or whatever the case may be. It often throws them up where... They get drawn in the cup and they've got a double header in the league and stuff like that. So yeah, it can be quite interesting. Uh, the fixture, uh, the fixture compiling machine, for want of a better phrase. That's not what it's called. Um, this is a this is a humdinger. It really is, and and it's amazing. You know these little side shows that 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 crop up as you alluded to in your um in your beautifully narrated introduction, <laughs> may I say about um. David Moyes being a former Everton manager, uh, Frank Lampard, a former West Ham player, um, El Sacchio, whatever they've called it. And then with the rumour that Rafa Benitez might be West Ham's next manager, who of course used to be manager Oof. of Everton as well. And, and all of this stuff. And then you've got the Anana thing. David Moyes wanted Anana. He, he, he spurned West Ham and he went to Everton. So you've got all these little sides. Zoom out. Former Everton. Oh, player. yes, keep it coming. Is that it? Well, you <laughs> I know, think but, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, and it's I think it's really it's it's a really good story, actually. Um, I don't think you can make a feature film out of it. Um, yeah. but it's a good story. Yeah, I mean, I wonder what happens if it's a draw. Do both managers get a sack? I, I don't know. I've, we'll have to wait and see, kind of thing. But the pressure on both managers is immense going into this one. The pressure on both teams is huge and the pressure on both boards going into this one as well yeah. is is also really really big as well um sky sports must be kicking themselves they've not got this one and they opted for whoever it is they've got on the tally this weekend because th like you said this has got everything that you want in a football match um makes it difficult to call but the just what is at stake is is incredible really whoever loses should someone lose on saturday and imagine 
their fan base is thinking, well, I want a sacking now. Now. No, 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 no farting around. Get that manager out of here. To be fair, even a team that wins might be thinking, I want my manager gone now. Get rid of him. I don't care if we won. Get rid of him anyway. Huge, huge game. Are you confident? No. Either am no. I. It's the two worst teams in the league at the minute. You know, it was Southampton, but they've picked up three points last week. You know, at the end of the day, it's us and Everton that are heading in one direction, and that's towards the bottom of the table. We're both in the bottom three. No, and there's and there are no excuses left for whoever loses this game. And and I mean at boardroom level. There are no excuses left. There, there, there aren't. You lose to this team, regardless of who it is, West Ham lose to Everton, Everton lose to West Ham, you lose to this other crap team, then you, you, you're looking at abject failure somewhere along the line to deal with whatever it is that's inherently wrong at your club. Um, I, I think from West Ham's point of view, if we can get this striker signing over line, that gives us some hope. I do believe that it's going to be hard for Everton to break down Zuma and Agurd which I think gives us a chance. Um, but I also do believe that they they have the, the kryptonite uh, to our Superman, um, which is the pace. And because we are slow, dog, dog, slow. And um, and we do sort of lack in energy when you uh, spoke with Anton on the Patreon podcast. Um, Anton was, well, he was very honest, wasn't he? Very candid in the way he was speaking about West Ham's energy and and, and the running and stuff. We, we are an old, slow team and um, and they they can have some energy in there. And that, that's the way for them to get um, to get against us. But we have some, you know, with Zuma in there and, you know, we've got some experience. We've got some wily campaigners in there as well. And if you bring in Ings, there's one chance, you know, you get that one chance. You'd look at someone like him and think, well, he, he can finish this. You know, that's the guy you'd put your money on to finish that that one chance, which is which is just as well, because we only seem to make about one chance per game. Um, but it's So maybe we can get one chance and Everton can get none, and then we might win the game. It should be a game of low quality, really. I think we'll see two managers afraid to lose the game. You know, you speak about, like, how we've got a guard zoom and that comes out the back. I think you will also have numbers at the back as well. When we're out of possession, I wouldn't be surprised to see us playing in finals left wing back still, so that we're a back five when defending so that we sit so deep to just try and eradicate the threat that Everton do possess on the counter-attack with the pace that they've got with our lack of pace, especially after conceding a goal on the counter-attack to Wolves. You would imagine Moyes is even more reluctant to commit bodies forward. But it's two managers clinging on for their job. And I wonder if they'll see his must-not-lose games. You know, maybe Lampard might get away with it a bit more than Moyes, considering it's a way fixture for Everton. But only a win will do for either team here, but I think as a result, instead of seeing two teams go for it, I think you'll see two really cagey teams sitting back a little bit, fearful of making an error and losing the game. And it could be a bit of a dull affair, but should it be an early goal, this could turn into a real end to end match. And I'm not I'm not confident. I am optimistic, but it's because of Everton. You know, I'm not sitting here because I think Moy's gonna come up with anything or one or two of our players are going to turn up and that's it. That's going to be enough to win the game. I'm optimistic because I think Everton are poor. So, of course, we have a chance, but it's nothing that we've done. It's what Everton have done. I say stuff that Everton have failed to do, perhaps. That's what gives me a little bit of optimism, but it's certainly not a confidence. So can I get your final words, Gons, and your score prediction, which is going to be interesting? Yeah, well, look, David Moyes struggles against young managers with a bright, sharp, tactical mind. But Frank Lampard isn't one. So I don't think he's going to struggle to that extent. Um, however, I, I do will go the ultimate prediction here, which is I think it's going to be nil-nil. And I think both managers are going to get sacked. Crikey. I'm going to say one nil West Ham. I think Zuma coming back... Having Danny Ings on the bench, because he's not going to start, despite what we want and hope. We know Antonio will start up front and Ings will come on. But with the way that Moyes goes about games, which is let's keep it tight until the last 20 minutes, actually, it might work this this game. It might actually work trying to keep Everton out for an hour or so and then bringing on Danny Ings and possibly Saeed Ben Rama as well. That might actually just be enough to win us the game, um, which is... Almost depressing to some extent. It, it, it sounds exactly. Yeah. I made you happy and joyous when I said my comments earlier, and then when you were saying, "I just," when you were speaking, I got sort of 
the yes, flight because, suit. because the worst thing is when I'm seeing it, you believe it. I do know it's the truth. You, just spoke the <laughs> you truth. think actually that can't happen. Yet. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. It was it was it was the bring side Ben Rama on, which was the final killer blow to my mood yet. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna say West Ham won, Everton nil, which I think puts us in a bit of a pickle actually. But we'll discuss that mm. after the game. Should we win one nil? We've enjoyed this preview somehow. I've done sometimes I think fan, live for Everton. <laughs> No, West Ham fans. We sometimes we're quite game. sorry. We, we, sorry, sometimes, sorry. Yeah, folks. sometimes we discuss the opposition. I think their fan base will have enjoyed that kind mm. words we just said about them. They yeah. might drop a like on it, but um, on this one, I'm not sure really. But if you have enjoyed the preview, please do drop a like on it. Subscribe to the Hammers chat. Myself and Gonzo, we'll catch you in a bit. Mm.